I have to switch the camera too. Is it working? Yeah. yeah. Alright everyone, we're doing something we've never done before. We're gonna try and live stream at Open Rescue. And the location we've targeted is highly secure. It's an extremely dangerous place. But it's also one of the most notorious humane washers within a few hundred miles. I frankly have seen very few places that lie more about the conditions and what happens to the animals in this place. But the reality is the conditions of this farm will be much better than a factory farm because this is not a factory farm. And one of the reasons we're doing this project today is because we want to show the world, whether it's factory farmed or genuinely from a small scale farm, these animals don't deserve to die. They deserve a chance at life. And we believe killing an animal intentionally is criminal animal cruelty. It is criminal animal cruelty to take a baby animal from her mother, drag her across the slaughterhouse floor and then kill her. And that's what we want to show the world today. We want to take these animals out of harm's way and, and take them to sanctuary. And you're gonna be joining us tonight. This is highly risky, obviously, because we've never live streamed this sort of thing before. We're actually about to turn into the location. It's also highly risky because this particular site is extraordinarily dangerous. There's an electrified fence, we've done scouting. There are barking dogs on the website of the location. There are armed people talking about security of the farm and how they train people on farm security. And the good thing is we have done our scouting. We feel like a lot of what they're doing is bluffing. And we've scouted before, have not had issues, and we don't think we're gonna have issues tonight. We also have an extremely well-trained team. So Lewis is on the live stream, Ben and Jank are around the corner, and we're about to turn right into the farm. And our plan is we're gonna park the car outside of the farm, make a little U-turn, get the car ready to leave. We are going to go in, document the conditions. We're gonna have dog treats. We've actually tried this before in the past, but we have a huge number of dog treats in our pants because we know these barking dogs are going to need something to calm them down if we're going to stop them from alerting the farm. The farm security is just a few hundred feet from where the goats are, so that's another reason this is extremely dangerous. If we need to get make a getaway, we're actually going to have to make a run down a hill. Just change my four-wheel drive to four-wheel low. We're going to have to make a run down a hill, jump onto a tree stump, and then jump across an electrified fence in order to get out. And if we have to do that with a goat, we'll do it. But we're going to do whatever we can to make sure at least one of these animals gets out. And for those of you who don't know what Open Rescue is, the idea behind Open Rescue is we believe what we're doing is right. That there is nothing wrong with trying to take an animal from harm's way. And many of you know, I've been accused of being a terrorist, a criminal. I'm being sued by a major turkey farm. All for taking animals who are quivering in fear and pain to the vet. And that's all we're going to do today. We're going to take an animal who's scared, who does not want to die. We're going to take her to the vet and the industry wants to claim that this is a crime. And we know that's not true, and I know that many of you know that's not true either. So let's take a right-hand turn. It's extremely dark, we're on a mountain uh, because the farm at issue here is secluded in a ranch. If we see anyone here, we might have to make a getaway, so there's no guarantees this is gonna be successful. Uh, Lewis, does anyone have any questions before we start? No questions, really, really but we got 170 people on the live stream and just infinite uh, positive comments. People are very supportive and uh, just thankful that okay. this is happening. So show them the road real quick. This is an extremely tight road. We're going to have to make a U-turn on this mountain road um, to make sure we can actually do our getaway. Uh, and this is, okay, we're passing this location first. No problem here. This is the same as it's always Yeah, that's not a problem, guys. Um, and then we're going to make a turn around this corner and that and then we're going to make a U-turn right about here. So that is our ultimate destination point. And right now I'm going to make a U-turn. And we're on a mountain, so uh, guys, you're going to have to bear with me. Let's hope I don't actually take you're, this car. You're on the right side, yeah. Good. Take this car off the mountain because that would be very bad for all of us. Yeah, you're clear on the right. Uh, and I would prefer not to go hurtling down this mountain before we even get that started. That would be preferable. That would definitely be preferable. So I'm gonna make, take it very, very slow, make a U-turn, very, very slowly. And then back it up this hill because that's where we're gonna need to be in order to get the animal out. <laughs> if we can get in a mountain today. Um, and you might ask, why are you going to this highly secure location? Well, one of the reasons we're going to this secure location is because we want to show the industry that no matter what security they put in place, animal rights activists are so committed to trying to rescue animals that we will succeed. Real we, quick, they going, cannot stop us. You're pretty close to the right-hand side. You seem like you have a lot more margin on the left. On the left? Yeah, the right, you're crashing into a tree. Okay. We're hitting a tree, folks. We're hitting a tree. It's okay, <laughs> we're in a very good SUV. We got this SUV specifically for this purpose. Now we're just going to back up. Okay, so 
Let's just be very careful. Keep turning my lights off. That would be good. <laughs> Are we looting behind us, guys? Nothing behind us. We're good. Yeah, you're good. Very clear. We got 230 people on the live stream, and it's growing. We're in complete darkness, folks, trying to back up a hill so we can position our car, and I think we're good here. Okay, so we have rules already set out. Um, the other benefit, I hope, of live streaming this open rescue is for everyone to get some insight into how we work. So you can learn yourself. Ben, you're taking the keys. Perfect. Another uh, aspect to this, it is raining. It's a downpour tonight. So one thing I forgot to mention, folks, is that it is raining tonight which is good and bad. It's good because it provides us some cover. It's bad and uh, it's bad because obviously we're all gonna get soaking wet and it's pretty cold outside, it's the winter. So, you know, we have some blankets uh, prepared if you don't need some help from us when we carry her out to stay warm. But, um, Louis, I think we're probably gonna ask you to turn that red light off now because as we enter the facility, folks, um, I'm, I'll turn this light on again real quick for now. As we enter the facility, we're gonna to have to be very quiet and not make too much noise. Because it's just around that corner, you can see that light. So, Louis, just show people the light and we're gonna walk up together. The light, yeah. And let's just be really quiet. And our communication protocol on any open rescue mission is that we operate on what's called a need to communicate basis. If you don't need to communicate, we won't. And this time we're gonna be a little bit, we're gonna operate a little bit differently because we wanna educate all of you about how open rescues work. So we're gonna communicate a little more than we usually do but um, there are gonna be some time periods we're gonna be quiet and we want you to be, be there with us. So again, we're probably gonna start hearing the barking dog soon if we flag their attention. So don't be alarmed. Uh, we have the dog treats in our pants. We've done this before where you give dogs who are supposed to be guarding a facility treats and they realize they're good people who just wanna help animals and they'll even come along with you so we can maybe make a dog friend tonight from one of the guard dogs or one of the barking dogs. But the electrified fence and the armed security guards are obviously our biggest concern. Are you, all, are you guys all ready? Yeah. Yep. Jake, Fine. Lewis, Ben, you ready? Walkies yeah. are on. Walkies are on. We got a walkie talkies. Okay. Great. All right, let's go. What just happened? Here. Wait, wait, wait. Wait! I don't know what just happened. Okay, we're still going. We're still alive. We're still alive. Still alive. <laughs> still alive. Okay. okay. Just make sure you keep that on the Yeah, that. The boat line is right there. The security is going to be right there. You can see the light up ahead. That's the security. The barn is there. Ben. Ben. You can just stay right here and watch. Okay. I'm just gonna stay on the right Stay right here and watch. Okay. And let us know if anything comes up. The gate's right ahead. You can see that burnt thing in the light. So tell me about the buildings. That building is where some of them come out. Okay. Some of them come out. Where do you want to? Yeah, where the light is. Okay. We're gonna go around. Bring the light in closer. We're gonna go around that gate. Okay? Yeah. And then to the left. Okay. Because the kidding barn is over down there. Okay, so you're you going to be down stay there. here just watching this. And if you see anything, yep, you absolutely. let us know instantly. Okay, yep, absolutely. Get on the walk. I've got my yeah. earpiece in, so I'll hear you. Okay. Can, and so for can all I of do your a sake. Quick voice test right here to yeah. see the volume on this thing? Yeah. Okay, testing over. Uh, can you do? Copy. Over. Okay, perfect. Great. And all of you, Jake, um, if we need to escape, <clears throat> we have to go in that direction. Okay, so if we get I hear voices. Inside. There's one bark, I believe. Okay, it's barking. Yeah. It's barking. Might be the dog barking. Yeah. Okay, so everyone good? Yeah, good. Let's go. Perfect. I'll stay right here. It's a ditch right here. You see that beeping?
That is an electrified fence right there. I'm gonna have to get around it. So what you can't see now, folks, is we found the electrified fence. We're climbing through it. Come with us, guys. So you can see right over here is the actual barn where the goats are being kept. Bring it over here, Louis. You can't see anything. Yeah. Oops, I'm just gonna undo this chain. So go through here. Come on through there. Come on through. We do have so We do have a dog approaching us now. I'm watching the house. You gotta stick with me. It's a cute pup. You gotta stick with me. So it seems we have befriended the dogs. They've stopped barking. They're liking our vegan dog treats. We've got some vegan peanut butter dog treats. It's very muddy, so we're trying not to slip down this hill. I'm trying to find where the babies are going
Fox seems like we may have found a candidate. There's a baby right here, guys. Okay, so there's a baby right here. She looks like she's pretty young. Um, all these goats are going to be sent to slaughter. There are one million goats killed every year in the United States. It's one of the fastest growing types of meat in the United States, unfortunately, because people think it's sustainable. But the reality is these poor mothers had their babies taken away from them over and over again. They're raising these tiny pens. Look at this little pen for this mom and her baby. Um, it's gonna be heartbreaking to take this baby away from her, uh, her mama. And we're gonna say, I'm sorry to the mama and tell her we're gonna give the baby a good life. But if we leave the baby here, she's gonna be killed. And the way they kill these poor goats is just heartless. They drag them by their hind legs. They hit them on the head with a captive bolt gun. Many of them are not even unconscious when they're ultimately eviscerated in the slaughter line. So this is the future for this baby. We can't allow that to happen, so we're gonna take her out. Um, so this mama, come on. I'm really sorry, we're gonna take her baby, okay? Is it nice, sweetheart? Is that okay for you? This mama is gonna be heartbroken. And you often see when you take the babies from their mothers that they're extremely hurt by what's happening. And obviously we don't want to cause her any pain, but she's, it's happening over and over again. You want me to turn this off? Okay. 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 Hey, mama. Should I get a towel ready? Hey, mama. Yeah, get a towel ready. Hi, mama. So we're gonna get a towel ready, guys. What's that? Okay. We're gonna get a towel out, guys. Because um, we want to wrap the baby up, keep her warm. Because it's cold. And it's Hi, Mama. Mama. Keep her very warm in this blanket. Jake, can you close the gate up? I got it. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Mama! Sorry, sorry. Don't forget it. You wrap it around? Here, puppies. Here, puppies. More cute. We're gonna give these dogs some treats. That's all I'm trying to say. Put a light down here. Yeah, okay, it's on hook. Wrap it around. Wrap it around. Put it down there. And so one thing you gotta do is keep your hands underneath the goat so she got she's had something to stand on. And then keep her hands safe. We're gonna try not to slip down this hill. I got it. Just do this on my own. Okay, folks. Where's our last team member, guys? I think I saw. I saw him over here at one point. Yeah. Then we are on our way down. Please open the trunk. Please open the trunk. Then over.
Maybe we want to. Let's just put it in Yeah. Oh, sorry, Wayne. Let's go. I'll be in this one. Okay. All the, all the doors locked. Yeah. Louis, you, you locked up the gate? Yes. Okay, so we can go. Ready? Let's go. All right, okay, so folks, we made it back to the car. Let me turn the light on. Yeah. So we got a little baby here, and <laughs> she's sad because you know her mama didn't take it home. But um, we didn't yeah, alarm. We didn't trigger any sort of attention, which is good. But this baby's scared. She's never been outside of that little pen. Um, and let me turn around the other way a little bit so you guys can all see her. But she's very young. I mean, she's not just born but her fur is still uh, kind of just developing. She's only about, I'd say, seven pounds. So at adult weight, goats will be 35 pounds or so. And um, the two breeds of goat they most commonly use in goat meat are Kiko breeds and boar goats. She looks like probably a Kiko, which is from New Zealand because she's got a black head. Boar goats tend to have brown heads and they'll usually raise them for about six months and they'll send them off to a processing plant for slaughter. And one of the disturbing things about the industry now is they realize that people care a lot about what's happening to animals. They realize that people meet little babies like him. Wanna see? Come closer up. Mm, we love you, baby. They, they realize that people really love animals like this. And so they're marketing their products and saying that we're doing things humanely, that we love animals too. And a lot of these goat meat farms, I don't know if you guys saw this advertisement from Whole Foods recently where they're saying, you know, you love, you love, uh, do you have love? Well, we have love too. And they have, you know, basically an advertisement for, for beef where they have these carved up. And obviously that's not very loving to kill the animals, but no one really knows until they meet these animals face to face. But when you meet these animals face to face, you realize that they're scared. They don't want to die. They don't want to be killed. And this goat now for the rest of her life is going to be living in peace because we're going to take her to a secure location. Well, no one will ever find her who wants to her or she's going to have friends. Many of you saw the rescue of Lenny that happened just this week. Um, one of the reasons we're doing another goat rescue is because, first, because we know that goat meat is a huge and growing industry. That um, goat meat, many people don't realize this, but goat meat is among the, if not the most commonly eaten meat around the world, among the most commonly eaten meats, because these poor animals are extremely gentle. They're easy, easy, very easy to handle. I mean, look at this little baby right now. Right? Look how easy she is to handle right now. Right? I just took her out of this uh, scary place and she's already hopping around on her legs. She's having some fun, right, baby? Hi, oh, sweetheart. Um, so uh, the, the animals are easy to handle. The other thing is they're, they're easy to feed, that you can raise a goat basically in any environment. Um, and so because of that, the goat meat industry has doubled in the past 10 years, and it doubled again the 10 years prior to that. So, Jake, you want to say hi to the baby? We haven't given her a name yet. We're actually not even sure if she's a she or he. We'll call her a she for now. Um, but because of the fact that they are so easy to raise, people are, are raising and killing them across the world. And you, you may have heard of Heifer International, even these nonprofit organizations that will buy goats for people in the developing world on the grounds that it's ending oppression, that it's helping people by, by torturing these poor baby animals. And, and obviously we know that these baby animals don't deserve to be tortured, they don't deserve to be killed. Um, so this, this baby hopefully will have a long and happy life. Um, we're gonna get her back home, give her some milk to eat. She'll have plenty of time to rest. And um, it seems like she's pretty weak, but we're gonna keep her warm. Let's wrap her up again. Hi, sweetie. Keep her warm, keep her wrapped up. So for the rest of her life, she's gonna have a good life. But some other things to note is, if we hadn't taken this poor baby away, she's got two little horn buds right now. And uh, within the first few weeks, they do a thing called debutting, where they take basically a torch and mutilate these poor babies' heads and faces, right? They burn their horns up because they know when you're taking a goat off to slaughter, the breeding goats you don't have to worry about. When you're taking a goat off to slaughter, if she still has horns, she could hurt you. And they don't want a lot of that to happen. And even though these are very gentle creatures, occasionally they will butt somebody. And, and because of that, they'll burn their, their faces, their heads, and it's excruciatingly painful. They don't use any, they don't use any painkillers. If this little guy is a boy, they would castrate him. They'd uh, basically pick him up, flip him on his back, and cut his genitals off with no painkillers. And they do that because, you know, they're not planning to breed him. So there's no reason for him to have that sexual organ. And again, no painkillers. And he'd live for six months, even in a so-called humane farm, he'd never receive any veterinary care. So if he got sick, if he needed some antibiotics, um, he'd never get any sort of veterinary care. And that's what happened to Lenny, right? He, Lenny had a disease called coccidia, where his parasites were growing in his intestines and literally eating his insides away. So he collapsed on the ground, was laying in his own feces, and there was nothing being done to help him. 
because he was just a commodity. But um, when we rescue animals, they're no longer commodities. They're being treated like living creatures. And this is what we're asking of the world. But, but if he had gotten sick, he wouldn't have been treated. And then after six months, just as still a baby, um, at probably one half his adult size, he would have just been killed. And, and obviously that's not okay. And, and we're not gonna allow that to happen. So this little guy, for the rest of his life, is gonna live in peace, okay? How does that sound, buddy? Um, you can see he has some eye discharge right now. That could be a sign of some sort of infection. Um, the goats have a lot of viral infections, so you often see goat pox or uh, other sorts of diseases flaring up where they get sores in their bodies. So if you all saw the rescue of Gus or Eddie a few weeks ago or a few months ago at the Oakland Slaughterhouse, Gus had, or Eddie had, sores all over his face from a viral infection, and that's what happens to goats as well. So if he, and a lot of times, if you ever had a cat with feline herpes, you know, they get all this eye discharge, that happens to goats as well. But sometimes when they have a virus, um, it looks like he's interested in treats, but I think you're probably so, still young enough to eat, to eat medicine. Um, but we had we had some goat, goat treats. We haven't given him any goat treats yet. We're gonna take him to his ultimate destination. Um, we'll probably uh, try and, in the early morning, grab him some some milk replacer because he probably is young enough that he still needs milk. Um, and actually, I'm not even sure if he's a he, so what do you guys think? Do you wanna check him out? So Wayne, we're getting a lot of questions about um, why we weren't able to save the mom as well. So if you could address that real quick. Well, the mom was a 60 pound animal and even carrying, if you saw the little hole that we squeezed through, we would not have been able to carry that goat out. Um, in fact, there's, there's no chance we'd have gotten this guy out if we tried to take the mom too. So while well, we'd love to take the mom and give the mom and her child um, a chance to, to live a long and happy life, that just wasn't feasible for us. And it does look like this guy's a boy. Um, I'm just, I'm gendering him right now. I'm not the best at sexing goats, but just from the feel, it's hard to tell when they're so young, but it looks like he's a good little guy. So um, we're gonna take him to a place, a sanctuary, where he'll have some other goat friends. So it sounds like Lenny's gonna have a buddy. Does that sound good? And I don't know if folks on the live stream have any ideas on what to name him, but we hope to give him a good and happy name. And I hope to have you around um, for the next 20 years, because goats can live 20 years. But in, in slaughterhouses and farms, even on so-called humane farms, they're killed after just six months. And again, the process by which they're killed is just gruesome. They, it doesn't matter how well you treat your animals before they're sent to the slaughterhouse. When you take them to the slaughterhouse, they will die a painful and terrifying death. Because anytime you commodify animals and turn them into meat, it's gonna cause immense suffering. And the typical method is they take them down a chute. So these animals, who often have never been outside of their farm environment, are transported in this horrible truck. They're taken down a chute when they get to the slaughterhouse where they're scared, they use electric prods, they use sorting boards to push them down the chute. And when they get to the end of the chute, there's a machine that grabs them, traps them, and has their head sticking out. Mm, just this little head. And, and a, guy, a man will come up to this little baby, and there are still babies when they're slaughtered, with a gun to his head, a captive bolt gun, and shoot it a, a, a spike into his skull. And if they miss, he won't be killed. He'll just be stunned. Or, or maybe he'll just be in pain because he'll have a hole in his jaw or a hole in his mouth. And after that, they let the machine out, they fall to the ground, collapse to the ground because they've just been hit in the head. And then they grab them by their hind legs, hook them onto a machine that holds them upside down and someone slits their throat. So, chewing on my leg. Um, but the problem is if he, if he hasn't been properly stunned, which happens to so many animals, they will literally have their throat slit and their bodies ripped to pieces while they're still conscious, screaming in agony. And all these babies, because they're just six months old, are still yearning for their mothers. So when they're taken to slaughter, they literally cry for their moms. And you heard mama darting, you saw and heard mama darting out of her pen. She wanted to get out of her pen. But you also probably heard her crying. And that happens all the time too, because mamas don't want to be separated from their babies, but they are separated from their babies over and over and over again. And it's not right. And, um, but the good thing is we have a really happy, beautiful place where this baby goat is gonna to go to. And she's gonna spend the rest of her life with, her, with a new mama who's gonna take very good care of her. It's a human mama, but it's a mama who will take very good care of her. So does anyone have any questions? And if I could ask you, just I'll share this live stream because the reason we're doing this is to show you how easy it is. That for so long, I as an animal rights activist and vegan felt completely powerless to stop these animals from being tortured and killed. And now I realize with direct action everywhere and with all of you supporting us, we could take nonviolent direct action, go right into the places where these animals are being slaughtered, mercilessly abused, <coughs> where mothers are being taken away from their children. And we can rescue them. We can give them the lives they deserve. But for more people to hear about this work and realize they have the power to save lives as well, we need you to help us. So please, please share the live stream right now. And if people on the live stream could just even comment saying you're sharing it, because the more people who see you're sharing the live stream, the more they'll share it too. 
And we don't have a big marketing budget. We don't have a public relations firm. What we have is you, and we depend on you for my safety, for this team's safety, and for this little guy's safety. So the second thing I'm gonna ask is if anyone has any ideas for names for this little We've guy. We've got a lot of name suggestions okay, coming so in. Okay, so Lewis, you wanna read something? Get, yeah, tell me who's so, suggesting them too. Okay, so the one I've seen the most, well, Andrew Scher is saying Larry. Larry, hi Larry, what do you think? Larry um, and honey? Uh, Char Charmy uh -huh. is saying Johan. Johan? The one I'm seeing the most, uh, I think Eureka was the first to say it. Eureka. Rain. Rain. Oh yeah, I like rain today. because you know it was rain. It's and it's really wet right now. Totally. We're all really cold and wet right now. And we Lori's saying, you know, rain would be a good name as that's most likely what helped the mission. Yeah. So I think the rain that. did help the mission. Let's keep him nice and warm, nice and dry. And the rain did help the mission because you guys all heard the barking dogs. Um, we saw on the, the place's website ahead of time they have workshops on farm security, and they had a big shotgun in the on the website as the image and and so we were really concerned that we were gonna get shot and with the barking dogs uh, there was a, a flashing red light that seemed to be a camera we we're really worried someone's gonna just run out of there and with a gun and start shooting you know and we've got all these nice cameras and we have friendly personalities but that's not gonna stop farmers from potentially hurting us because they're claiming I'm a terrorist for trying to help a little baby like this I mean look at this little baby how could helping oh. this little baby be being a terrorist that's ridiculous that's completely absurd but this is a system in which we live today <laughs> where people who try to help little babies like this little guy are being called criminals and terrorists, but you know and I know that's not true. But the way for us to make sure the entire world recognizes that is for you to share this and say that compassion is not a crime, that rescue is not terrorism, rescue is rescue. And I think, Ben, you had a name suggestion too. Ben, this is just your second mission ever, yeah. right? I mean, did, what was your name suggestion, Ben? George. George? George. Okay, because I think you were saying Lenny and George from Of Mice and Men, right? <laughs> So maybe you've read the, the book by John Steinbeck. Um, I think Cassie was the one who named the other goat we saved, Lenny. And we're thinking maybe Lenny and George could be a good name for these two. Um, Jake, did you have any ideas for names? Or Lewis? Uh, I haven't thought about it yet. Okay. I was thinking Rain as well Rain? Uh, at the Rain. same time. Yeah, yeah, and people are going wild for the name Rain. Rain. Yeah. You guys like the rain? And yeah, he was in the rain. Yes, he was definitely in the rain. Uh, and a lot of people are sharing as well. Please share, yeah. Could you just um, say some of the names that I'm, people I'm are sharing? For him. It's okay. being flooded by rain support right now, rain so support. I can't okay. even see it. Good. There we go. <laughs> yeah, well, it seems like rain is our, our winner. And this is the first time in history, folks, that we've ever done an open rescue on Facebook Live. And I'm so grateful to all of you for joining us because if, if we're going to continue to do this work and continue to grab the media spotlight the way we need it, we're going to have to be, in, be innovative. We're going to have to try new things. And Facebook Live is a new technique that allows those of us who don't have the tens of millions and billions of dollars of animal agriculture to broadcast live to the world and show the world live what we're doing. Because usually it's only these big broadcast networks, ABC, NBC, CNN, that are multi-billion dollar companies that can do these things. But with your help and with Facebook, oh, you can see there's some blood on her face, sweetheart. You can see there's a little cut on her nose and she's got a little blood on her face. It's okay. No more blood for you, okay? No one is ever allowed to cut you ever again. All right, sweet boy? He's a sweet boy. He's such a sweet boy. Uh, but as I was saying, you know, we have the power now to broadcast live to potentially billions of people. There are three billion people on Facebook. Three billion with a B. And that means we can reach people in a way that we were never able to reach people before, but only with your help. So please, please, please share this live stream. Share it in every page. And share it with anyone who thinks that humane meat is a thing, because it's not a thing. And all you have to do to realize that it's not a thing is look at this little guy in the eye. Look at him. Hi, Baba. Hi, Thomas. How are you? Look at this poor little guy in the eye and ask yourself, would you eat him? Would you allow anyone to hurt him? If you would not eat him, would you would not allow someone to hurt this poor little boy? Then, then humane meat is a lie. It doesn't exist. It's wrong and it has to stop. So any questions about our operation? That was actually a lot faster than I expected. It was extremely Very difficult quick. because of the mud. Um, I don't know, Lewis, if you had some trouble, but I certainly, you could see muds all over our pants. Um, I've got mud all over my shoes. Um, well, I don't, I think you were the only one to slip because we were able to stay in a single file line. Yeah. And uh, that's one thing we do in open rescue missions. So the team lead stands in front and the team lead falls first. And if hopefully right. if the team lead falls, no one else falls. That's exactly what happened today. So good job guys. Yeah. I thought it went great. Um, and just like kind of to address, we, we did get quite I wasn't actually able to see them at the time yeah. because we were focusing on, you know, not being shot, shot. and rescuing someone uh, and, yeah. you know, taking care of the dogs who were barking at us. But we did get quite, quite a lot of comments about, you know, 
please take the mom. Please take the mom. Yeah. And I know we would love so much to take, take the, the mom. mom. But we can't. The we don't have is... placement. And I, I yeah. wasn't able to show at all. Well, yeah, you let me just see at all the fence yeah. that we had to climb through. And people were saying, you know. Two fences. We had to go through two fences. Two fences, absolutely. Yeah, so that, folks, it was, it was impossible. There was, in fact, the, when we had scattered previously, there actually was a small space where we possibly could have fit through with a larger animal. But that space was gone. It was gone this time, and it was replaced by a new electrified fence. And you know, we can't we can't electrify an animal uh, and, and abuse an animal in the process of trying to rescue them. So we're not going to put the mom through that. And the mom, for what it's worth, will get a chance to live for an extended period of time because she's a breeding animal. And it doesn't mean she's going to have the happiest life. She, her mom, her babies are going to be taken away from her, but she's in no imminent risk of harm. Well, this baby, within the next few months, is going to be sent off to slaughter. But um, again, if you, we we squeeze through a space that you know, I think you saw this too that. Fitting this big camera, for example, through that space was almost impossible. That even Jake and I and Lewis, I mean, we're not that big people. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty average sized, maybe even small person, and we could barely squeeze through that. And we needed to squeeze this little guy through it too. So the prospect of taking a mom out was just impossible. Although it's heartbreaking that we had to leave her behind. Any other questions? So people are asking a lot about, um, you know, how they can get involved in yeah. work like this, how they can start teams, and uh... yeah. So this is the new wave in the animal rights movement that we're getting to the front lines. We're going right to the places where people are torturing and killing animals, and we're stopping it. We're taking the animals out. We're exposing the cruelty and showing the world that this has to stop. But there's so many ways to help out. One way is to do exactly what you're doing right now. You all were part of the team today. And if all of us get arrested, which is possible, in the next 24 hours, it's quite possible because we live stream all of this, that a police officer will come up and try and sweep us all up. We'll try and hurt this little guy. That's what happened to baby Lily and baby Lizzie when we rescued them from a Smithfield pig farm. When the factory farmers and animal abusers of the world find out, they have a lot of money. They're making a huge amount of money of hurting these animals, even though they're committing crimes. Under, under state law in every state in the nation, intentionally killing an animal is a crime. And while they have exceptions for so-called food animals, this is not a food animal. This is an animal. This is an animal just like our dog or cat. This is an animal just like um, you or I. It's just like our children, just like our brothers and sisters. And she has a, he has a family. He has a life that's worth living. And, and under the animal cruelty law of every state, killing an animal who is a sentient being, a vertebrate animal, is a crime. And we can't allow these industries to continue to distort and betray our legal system and change it into something that is frankly just a pawn for corporate profits that has to stop and the only way for that to stop is for more people to take these sorts of direct actions so the most important thing is be aware educate and empower yourself so you can help babies like this so the second thing i'll say right now is if you haven't heard about the animal liberation conference so has everyone heard about the animal liberation conference in may we are going to be training people i've been doing this work for well over 10 years now i've been in hundreds of farms exposed cruelty that has been seen by millions of people across the world but I want to share every single thing I know with you. And the only way for me to do that effectively is for everyone to come to the Animal Liberation Conference in May at UC Berkeley. So we're expecting some of the biggest figures in the animal rights movement. Frankly, some of the biggest figures in social justice and American politics will possibly be there. And we want you there too. And if you're there, you can come to an open rescue training, learn exactly how these missions work, how to train a team, how to get press, how to engage in animal care so these animals are carefully maintained and carefully um, uh, cared for after their rescue because it does no good to do a rescue if afterwards the animals don't survive. We need to take care of these animals over the long term. So come to the Animal Liberation Conference, come to the Open Rescue Training, which is the first day, but most importantly, come to the last day because every single year at the Animal Liberation Conference, which used to be called the DXC Forum, we stepped up our game. We've done things that have never been done before. And this year, let me tell you, we're going to do something that I've dreamed about for 20 years that I thought was not possible. But we're gonna take you into a place that's, that no one has gone before, and we're gonna come out with a changed world. The world will be changed after we come out. So please, come to the Animal Liberation Conference. But, but beyond that, the most important thing is I always say, find your voice, find some friends, and fight like hell. It's as simple as that. You need to find your voice. Be confident and strong for the animals. Don't be afraid to speak out when you see animals being hurt. Second, find some friends who also believe that animals are not things and that animals deserve to be treated with decency and then finally fight like hell. You've got to be willing to fight. It's not enough to be vegan. It's not enough to be vegetarian. It's not enough to sit passively in our homes. We have to be out there. Put ourselves out there and fight for these animals because they are fighting. Every single day of their lives, they are fighting to survive just like this little guy is fighting. He did not want to die. He did not want to be killed and we're not going to let him be killed and he didn't. He was going to fight for himself and it's, it's up to us to fight with him. Any other questions or comments? Um, where can we find the details of the Animal Liberation Conference? Do you know the link? Just liberationconference.com. And I'm sure somebody on social media, someone on the DXC team, will be sharing a little bit about this conference. Just 
uh, wait for someone. They'll probably include the link right now. Um, but a little bit more about goats, by the way. Goats are the most friendly animals in the world. I am a huge dog person, so many of you know that I've rescued a lot of dogs from dog fighters. In fact, that's how I got started, just sticking into people's houses in Chicago who are abusing dogs. And, and the reason we have to do this, just to be clear, the reason we have to take direct action is because, is because the government does nothing. Whenever we report animal abuse, when we report situations like Lenny's situation where we have a goat starving to death, um, collapsed in the ground in his own feces, the government doesn't respond at all. And so I, I learned this a long time ago, 20 years ago in the city of Chicago, where I would report a dog on a chain in the winter freezing to death. I would report a cat clearly trapped in a cage, never being let out, and the city wouldn't respond at all in Chicago. So I started just going into people's houses and taking the animals out because if animals are being tortured and the government's not responding, then the people have to take direct action. And this has been true of every social justice movement in history. When there is some systemic oppression that the government is completely unresponsive to stopping, is completely ignoring, it takes the citizens standing up for ourselves and speaking out to change. And that's what we did today. And that's what we need your help for. And the most important thing that all of us have to recognize is we need to fight. We can't just sit passively on the sidelines. We can't just pretend the problem will disappear on its own. It is our obligation as people who have benefited from human supremacy for, frankly, hundreds of thousands of years. These animals have been victimized by human violence for over 250,000 years. And it's about time for us to stop that and give them the lives they deserve. And we can. That's the most important thing. There is a huge movement of people rising up. Just a few weeks ago in Tar Heel, North Carolina, there were hundreds of people who tried to shut down a slaughterhouse. Just a few months before that, in a slaughterhouse in Oakland, we shut down a slaughterhouse and started taking the animals out. A bunch of us got arrested, but that is the cost of justice. Sometimes personal sacrifice is the cost of justice. So if you believe in justice, if you believe in freedom, if you believe in kindness, if you believe in love, if someone you love is being hurt, you need to take action. And if you don't take action, you don't actually love them. And so today, we're taking action for animals and asking you to help us in taking action animals for animals because we know that you, oh, sweet boy. Goes, folks, if you, don't, if you don't realize just what happened, he just laid his little head down on my knee for the first time and laid down. And he's calming down because he realizes that we're here to care for him. We're not here to hurt him like everyone else he's met, all the other human beings he's met. We're here to care for him. And that is a new and beautiful experience. Right, buddy? Can you give me a kiss? Mm. Good boy. Jake, is he cute or what? Yeah. He's pretty cute. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Jake? How do you feel, Jake? Uh, we are there a lot, a lot quicker than I was expecting, and it's also a lot slippier. Very slippery. Yeah. Than I was expecting. To yeah, but we got, we got somebody out very quickly. You guys are so professional. They never even do. Even with yeah. the dogs barking. Even with yeah, we got out really on, quickly. Like, they never even woke up. And, and just so you know, we, we, there's extensive preparation that goes into these projects. Everyone in this room has been trained and vetted extensively. When you have an open rescue team, you have to trust people instinctively. So Lewis and Jake and, and, and Ben, these are people I trust with my life, right? And if you don't trust them with your life, if, if you don't have that sense of just intuitive, instinctual trust, then you should not be going out on the field with people. But they also have to be trained. They have to have experience. And so every single... I think it was in 2006 so I've been doing this for 12 years now and so we don't suggest you do this just run out there and try and help animals without sort of the right sort of training and the best way to get training the best way to get training is to go out in the field with somebody who's already experienced and shadow them and actually one, that's one of the things you're doing on this project Lewis right Lewis is shadowing me right now with the hope that eventually Lewis can become a open rescue leader team leader themselves and I'm excited about that because every time I go out in the field I'm bringing someone with me who can shadow me so I can mentor them so the next time they don't need me but the second best way is to come to a training at a conference like the Animal Liberation Conference. We have an all-day training. It's actually a simulated open rescue where we'll talk about stories like this little guy's story. We put you in a team and you simulate what it's like to do an open rescue together over the course of a day. So please come to the Liberation Conference. It's a training that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. The, the cost of the conference is infinitesimally small. It's ridiculous. For a week-long conference with food to, to pay $75 is incredibly low and you will benefit immensely from it and become a more powerful advocate for animals. You'll learn how to find your voice, how to find some friends, and how to fight like hell. And that's all we need to preach a world where we can liberate animals in one generation or less. And we just proved it today. If people say there's nothing we can do about what's happening to these poor animals, we proved today there is something. We can rock right into the places where they're torturing the animals and start taking them out, and that's what we did today. Okay, so other names. Uh, I think people have said George, they've said um, they've said rain. They said what else? Um, so 
most of the name. If y'all want to say names again. Okay, we're just going to conclude with names, uh, and then we're going to probably shut down the live stream. And we'll try and live stream tomorrow and show you how he's doing tomorrow at the secure location we're taking him to. Any other names? Okay, well then let's just let's just conclude by saying, folks, can you bring it up to me again? Just conclude by saying, let me let me lift this guy up. Can you see both of us? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to conclude by saying, please share this live stream. Please come to the Liberation Conference, liberationconference.com. And most importantly, keep speaking for animals. It doesn't matter how many people make fun of you. It doesn't matter how hard it seems. It doesn't matter how op any obstacles you face, how depressed you are by seeing videos and images of animal suffering because there's hope for the world when we can take animals like this out. Lenny, Lenny and this little guy right here today are, are symbols of the future. That within one generation, mark my words, within one generation, we will not have to dart around in the middle of the night to save animals because we will be going before the White House, the Supreme Court, and the U.S. Congress to pass a constitutional amendment for animal rights. That is in our future. And I know this to be the case because more and more polling data, more and more movement statistics are showing this movement is growing stronger every day. And you are part of that. So thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for being a part of our rescue team today and rescuing this little goat. Um, we'll share some more details over the next couple of weeks about what happened. We can just finish it. Okay.